Hey guys, and how's it going? Hey, we're going to continue on this homemade tractor that I dragged out from underneath a house about a week or so ago. We've got a couple of videos on it already. The first one was basically just getting it out from under there, getting it to here, and getting into what it needed on the engine. Tried to get the engine to run. It had no spark. Found out it had a bad coil. Took care of the coil issue on the last video and actually went through the carburetor. And it's running decent. So we're gonna go continue on from there. So we gotta get the oil out of the engine. We gotta look into the transmission, the rear brakes are locked up, all that kind of stuff. Again, it sat for who knows, 15 years or so, and it was covered under a tarp. And unfortunately they do more damage than good in my opinion, they kind of hold moisture underneath it. So it's been pressure washed, a bunch of junk has been cleaned out, the mouse nest has been removed, uh, but it does still need more work. And we're gonna go continue on with that. I think what we should do probably before we get into the tractor, is deal with the gas tank. That is pretty nasty on the inside. So maybe we'll get into that. We'll have that do its process for getting cleaned while we work on other stuff. Let's get set up and get into it. Yeah, fortunately the fuel was shut off to the carb, so the carb really wasn't that bad. But I gave a quick look inside here. <laughs> and I don't think the gas tank has survived as well as the rest of it. Oh yeah. Ooh. Oh. I bet you could actually smell it. <laughs> ah, there's some putrid. Now we're getting chunks. Now it's just mud coming out of it. I don't think there's anything in there that's supposed to be rattling. All right. yeah, it's literally just Oh, <laughs> I'm surprised it didn't leak. That is a lot of rust coming out of it. I guess worst case we have to, we're going to replace it, but we'll see if it'll, it'll survive. Wow. So much of it, it's making a mound coming up out of the fuel. So I'm gonna go work on shaking that out a little bit. We'll get a light down the side there. See what we got. Oh, wow, that stinks. We're going in. Uh, I can see metal on the bottom of the tank. Right down there. Here's where all the crap is. Down there. It's like inches thick. Maybe we'll try just putting some hardware in there, maybe some water, and we'll tie it to something and let it kind of turn around like a washing machine a little bit. I wonder if we could plug that fuel system up, or should we just leave it? If it's just, um, Since what's on the inside, we're gonna break anything off. Where was that? It was right there, straight down. Somewhere down in there, <laughs> it's supposed to be an inlet for the fuel. I think it's right there. Yeah, so let's go do that. Let's go get our set up, set up with something and we'll let it turn around and see if it holds fluid. I'm, a, I'm afraid it's gonna blow out somewhere. That was a lot of rust that came out of there and it came from somewhere, right? So, if it's that thing where it's going to blow out, I don't want to invest too much time in it, but we'll see. All right, well, it looks like a good size hardware to let go chug around. You want something with sharp edges. And let's go with these. Grab a bunch of those and throw them in there. Do you think we should throw a couple of little ones in there too, just to kind of like get the little nudges and corners? 
Let's go for these little square droppers. It's like baking with musty one. Follow me for more cooking recipes. That should do it. Let's see if we can get, a, get the cap back on it. Some plastic around it. That should stop it from leaking. It's got about a ah, half full of water. And that's too fast. Don't think that's gonna do much. <laughs> All the hardware is just stuck to one side. We'll just fine tune that speed a little bit. That sounds pretty good. Hey, should we jump on brakes? See if this jack will get us in the ballpark. I bet one of them freed up. Maybe not. I thought we saw this one rolling a little bit. Whoops. Nah, they're both locked up. All right, let's get those wheels off and see if we can find a brake adjuster. Hopefully back the brakes off a little bit and get the drums to come off. I think somebody said these were Oldsmobile hubcaps. Funky setup, huh? Go we'll grab a hair gun. <laughs> Two different sizes. those might be adjusters right there it's one each, yeah it's one on each side maybe we can go play with those I don't know what this is oh emergency brake cable that's what that would have been and I don't know if there's a, a brake right there it looks like there is huh that drum should be able to come right off of there I just got some wrench on them see if we get any movement out of them Problem is they don't know what's which way is tighter and which one's looser, you know. So we're just gonna go and turn, see what happens. <laughs> if that doesn't work, we'll go the other way. There we go. Bunch of rust falling out of it. Did that do anything for us? Not much. <laughs> They are whatever they are, full direction. I see we start wailing on that with a hammer a little bit. Well, I popped it in gear and started turning the pulley in the front. See if we get anything in the back to go. I see the tire on the other side at least moving. Where well, this one's not having it at all. I think maybe we'll jump over to the other side. We can get that drum off. I'll get an education on what's inside there and what we need to 
you know, which way we need to rotate stuff to get it to move. I jumped over the other side and I took a wire wheel. And I'm not quite sure if these are two separate pieces or not. It's still hard to tell. I can kind of get my nail down in there. I thought it was gonna, the drum was gonna break loose from here, but I have a feeling that maybe this is all one piece. So I took the nut off, gave it a couple of wax. Of course, it's not going anywhere. So I have a feeling we're gonna have to come up with some kind of puller, come either behind here or grab the studs and push on the center to get her to pop off of there. So it's to uh, the cabinet and see if we can come up with it. I grabbed that and that's not gonna work, but uh, something's gonna work. It's coming off, just doesn't know it yet. I'm going to give this puller about a 0% success rate. See, I'm setting my standards very high. <laughs> I think it's just going to pop off on us. Oh. Something's happening. Hopefully the shoes don't tuck on us and lock up. I definitely expected it to put up more of a fight than that. I shouldn't uh, speak too soon, right? Nice. Hopefully the other side that's locked up is able to do this. We'll just go. Ha! Yeah, I think that hub's two different pieces, but it's hard to say. Look at those big bearings, huh? Yeah, it, has, it definitely has a ton of rust in it. So the question is, I think it answers that question right there. Yeah, I have those. think those wheel cylinders are uh, definitely going to need some love. I don't know. He had some new ones, new old, all well, the old ones that maybe that he took off. Possibly we can use these. The other thing I'm, I'm afraid of now too is the master cylinders are probably going to be the same way. I don't know, maybe between the two of them we can put them together. Yeah, they might be available. Looks like there's a part number on the bag. Good. Let me go see if they can get the other side to go do the same thing. Hopefully. Something's moving. Yeah, I think it's taking the brake shoes with it. See so if you can get her. Uh... Something moved. Something <laughs> you see the rust falling out of it? <laughs> Wonder why it wouldn't turn. Yeah, a bit of moisture on that. That might be an issue. <laughs> I wonder why that one wouldn't turn, huh? Yeah. Hopefully we can get some kind of brakes on the cheap. Yeah, they're definitely in pretty tough shape. That one's free to fall off too. That's the issue. Look at that. I mean, we can sandblast and glue those back on, make them functional again. I think the biggest thing is going to be wheel cylinders, what we can do with those, and what we have for a master cylinder. Master cylinder, I think we can probably just, we, worst case, we get away with some kind of like generic one. All depends, depends on what they come up for per price. If they're cheap, we'll just go with cheap. Uh, I have a feeling sometimes you start getting into this age of stuff, you know, components are hundreds of dollars <laughs> not like 20 of dollars which i'm 
more in the ballpark for. All right, I'm gonna go pop these shoes off. We'll get them out of the way. We'll get the wheel cylinders off, get to the bench, and we'll kind of try to pop out the centers of them, see if there's any chance in trying to save what's inside there. So that's been going yeah, about 45 minutes. Well, about 10 or 15 minutes ago, I reset the odometer. I should have did it to begin with. So we got 1.6 miles on it. <laughs> I don't see a bunch of water leaking out around the wheels. I'm gonna go take that off. We'll take a look and see what we got. All right, let's go dig in. Well, I'm willing to bet that's gonna be some rusty water. The next day after Mexican food. For me, anyway. I'm gonna go take a few minutes. I'm gonna shake that hardware out of there. Maybe rinse it with a little bit of water, and we'll get take a peek in there and see what we got. Let's go take a peek. Perfect, but compared to what it was, I actually quite think it's usable. What I might do is let it, we'll let it dry out. I could probably try some muriatic acid, and then I'll eat the last little bit out of there. It's not that bad. Compared to the inch of rusty sludge that was in it, I even clean my nuts. Actually, we got the used ones that were in the bag. Won't we, uh, these might be our, even a better option. Those other ones really punched out a bunch of, of rust. It turned at least. So this should have like a, oh, the best way to grab it, I don't know if we can get the boot out of there. There we go. It's turning. I don't think that's the cylinder though. <laughs> I think the outer part is the cylinder. Let's go dust that out, get the crap out of there. Yeah, that's the lip right there. It should, you know, normally on a regular wheel cylinder, the bore is equal on both sides and you can push it out. This one looks like it's got a weird taper to it. We can try doing is, let's see if this one turns. Yeah. Let's try shooting some air. So you can launch one, <laughs> one of them out. Yeah, it wasn't, I wasn't thinking so. <laughs> uh, yeah, we wouldn't do. You would think that we could press the smaller one this direction, everything would fall out that side. I mean, they're already junk, right? We can't de junk them anymore. I'm going to take a wire wheel. We're going to clean up some of the rust that's on the edge there just so we're not pushing over that. We'll give a little, a little pressure on that, see if she decides to play, with, play well. We always shove it in the press, but let's just. For shits and giggles, see. Actually, that might be a little too big. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it's moving. I don't know if the other side's moving. That's the thing, you know. Whoops, sorry about that. Hit you in the head. Yeah. So there's a, a spring and a cup that's inside here. Uh, two cups with a spring in the middle of it. And that's all that's happening is we're moving that one down right now. Well... You're not really going to be able to go the other way, so I guess we just go for broke. Moving? Nope. It's going somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I don't think 
we're going to get. And we're moving out of that. Drove that sucker far though, huh? It's weird that it's got that step on. I don't know if that, you could probably measure actually the width across that. That's the same. Does that look the same as that? <laughs> it's hard to say. Yep. So we keep going through a little bit of lube down in there. I'm just going to help us. That's not a good sign. Crack the housing on the top side. It finally came out. Oh boy, they a mess. Yeah, about as good as a gas tank, huh? Unfortunately, there's not even anything left of the the bushing, the bushing, the um, the seal. It's just just all gum. Here's what kind of what it's supposed to look like. Yeah, they're done. There's no, there's no way that's gonna be able to be used. Hey, two different sizes. Let's look through the center of it. No, there's a lip. They're two different sizes, yeah. It, it would have had to go that way, hence the arrow. Yeah. Hmm. Guess I have to do a little bit of shopping, huh? He's got a part number. Well, I'm pretty confident that these are even going to be worse than... <laughs> the one that we just looked at. So I think they're going to be junk also. Uh, I think we, next thing we need to assess as far as what we have is maybe that master cylinder. Again, I'm going to have to do some shopping to see what, what is available. But so we kind of jump into this. <clears throat> yeah, see if you, I'll pop you in the stand. We'll go pop that cap off. See if there's actually any fluid in it whatsoever. And we'll get the lines off. Probably just going to have to go take it right off of there. I don't think that pedal... Anything's moving. Yeah. It's frozen into the master cylinder. You see the linkage is free up to to here, but nothing is moving in the master. So I think it's gonna be suffering the same fate that the rest of it did. Let's see if we grab it. Hopefully not break the plastic. Yeah. It's like flexing. <laughs> Feels like it's gonna break. I think I saw some movement. <laughs> what did I say? Yeah. Now, what do you want to do? Uh, I guess we just unbolt it, get it right out of there, put it up on the bench, and take a peek at it. Well, at least brake fluid came off of it, out of it, when I took the uh, brake line side of things off. So it's got a C clip. On this side, retaining the plunger, we'll do the same thing. We'll hit that with a wire wheel, get all the crap off of it. And I think we can actually probably put something like a rod down inside there and drive, see if we can get the piston out of here and what the condition of this is. You know, again, if it's uh, savable or not. Yeah, it looks like it's got a part number on it too. We look it up. You know, I'm gonna go home and look these up, and they're gonna be like 12 bucks a piece. <laughs> yeah, sure. Hit it with a wire wheel. See if we get any any movement out of them. Is this the right way? Of course it's not. Wrong way also. <laughs> I mean by wrong ways. One pushes, one pulls. I'm gonna try See if we could tap that ring to get to move, at least rotate, and that'll 
break it loose from its grip if it'll move. The screwdriver is already damaged, so. side moving. Snake it right out of there. <laughs> I'll try to see if we get the same luck on the other side. There you go. Let's grab it with something so you can just wiggle it right out of there. Yep. We're in! I'm going to go probably hit that with a wire wheel again because the path that you go through, you're going to chew up the, the bore that's on there. And we'll shoot some oil in there and then we'll see what we can get for a rod to fit down like a brass rod or something. I don't know what's in there, I think it's probably just going to be like a, a square plug on the end of it with a seal going around it. I don't know if it's got a seal going around a piston or it's, if it's just like a cap all the way through. If it's a cap all the way through, the problem is we're going to put a rod against it and we're going to be pushing against that rubber and distort, uh, destroying it. But it's worth a shot. Let's see what we get. A piece of brass rod. It might be too short though. No, it hit something. <laughs> see what we get. That's the spring loaded plunger. So that's gonna go. <laughs> well, at least you know the seal part of it works. It's just this part that's frozen. Let's see if we can drive it in. If we could drive it in, there's already fluid around there. And then we can kind of clean up the edge. Maybe it'll come back out. too far and then see if we can go clean this edge up maybe with a honing stone then we could drive it back through it like I said it's that's where you're gonna do more damage but dare I say it I'm feeling a, a little bit more hopeful <laughs> yeah, the bore actually doesn't look too bad neither I'm gonna work that a little bit I wonder if we can um, We can get that spring to push it back. Yeah, it did. It popped back up forward. We might be able to get that to go. Always get that reservoir open yet too, huh? I think we're just gonna get breaking off the ears. Let's we'll see what we get. It's gotta go that way, right? Come on. Probably just broke the rest of it. I think so. Yeah. All right, we're just going to uh, give it a Hail Mary on that. I'm going to go grab it with the, something to go grab the outside of the edge of it there. Actually, I'm going to go hit it with a wire wheel. I don't think it's going to do anything for us because it's plastic. It's not like it's metal on metal. So you can grab some channel locks, but I saw these in the drawer. Let's go try these first. Okay, that thing was never going to come out of there. Try heating it, getting it gooey. And no matter what we do, I think we're gonna end up destroying it. Uh, let's go with channel locks. There it go. 
this. Ha. Puking out the rust. She's uh, got a bit of crud in her. Not exactly nice clean brake fluid. But again, the piston on the bottom is moving. I think we should drive that in. I'm going to go clean up that edge, throw some oil on there. See if we can get this whole assembly out. I got <coughs> that direction, tension on it. Bit of lube. Try to cut that top edge. Get some RPMs out of it. I got the piston stuck down. Just so it's out of the way, I think if we flip it open and give it a tap, it'll it'll pop out. Got it back and butt up a little bit. It's supposed to be gutting up, but Alright, let's go see if that'll... Now you did it. Give her a little... And a little lube. Get it to unstick now. There it goes. I was hoping it'd just come lift right out of there. Mike, looking, getting somewhere. <laughs> it's going. There we go. Got it. Got it. Right. There's the other plunger down below. I think we should be able to push that out. There we go. Look like it's okay. Did it survive? It's that cap right there. That's just going to make our seal for us. I think it'll be okay. All right. Now we can run a home through down to the center of it. Now, we can go the whole way. Rinse that out, see what it looks like. Yeah, let's go see how that looks. Looks decent. I, I washed it out with brake clean, so it's going to be chalky looking. I'm just looking for big pits. Oh, it looks pretty good actually. I hope that light's overdoing it for you. There you go. I think. Better wipe it with a rag, wouldn't hurt. Yeah, it's fine. I don't see any pits. I don't know if we're going to be better off. What is that little stalactite sticking out of there? A little, little goo gob glob. There's no metal. Parts. I mean, there's, there's no rubber parts that are in there. There's that little drain hole in the bottom. The fluid's allowed to go down into. I'm debating whether to maybe hit it with like a media blaster. That might be the best way to go, like a soda blast. I think that's what I have in the sandblasting cabinet. Yeah, let's go do that. There's nothing in it now anyway. We just make sure we rinse it real good. I actually have Black Beauty in it. Yeah, it seems like it did the job pretty good. That lumpiness that you're seeing in there, that coarseness, that's just the casting of it. That's not material still sitting in there. All that on the side there, that's not coming off. 
But we got all the contaminants out of it. I washed it real good. We got to get that port unclogged. It's blocked right now. There we go. Get the little pee pee. Little pee pee hole is cleared. Let me put it all back together. Well, I guess before I put it together, I should explain what's what does what. All right, so you got the the board down below. This is where the brake pedal rod is pushing on. So it pushes this whole assembly forward. It's probably better off leaving it where it is. That whole assembly pushes forward. There is this cap is behind that first hole. It's back about this far. It allows brake fluid to fill up this cavity right here. You push the brake pedal, that seals that chamber off and now it squeezes that fluid forward and comes out the brake line in the front. As you come back, any fluid that got pushed down the system gets refilled by that little hole and you're, ble you're bleeding brakes and you know, you're, this whole area is kind of filled with air at first and then you pump it forward. It pushes a bunch of air out the bleeder. It comes back, the chamber fills up with more fluid and you, you keep doing that till you get rid of all the air. This side of it right here is just to, pr uh, to keep the brake fluid that goes in from going the other direction where the pedal is. And that's what this seal does. It just has a, like a low pressure area here. This is all high pressure. This is low pressure. This is where that big hole is going into this area. And it just allows fluid to flow forward and back on this side of it. And anything that leaks around it kind of gets caught in this area. It does not exit, you know, past the seal and starts blowing out by where your feet would be. Make sense? Kind of? Put a little bit of brake fluid in and push it through but there's nothing in the front resisting it right now it definitely should just go flubbering at the front i should i should probably show you the holes on the inside huh? what it's doing see down inside there I see like bubbles come up that's the air taking the place of the fluid it should be cushioning out in the front pretty soon. Good. They're all up before I filled up the chamber behind it. Let's uh, give it a little more. It should start coming out the front. There you go. That's one thing I think that we're able to bring back for no money. Now we got to still have to go deal with those, those wheel cylinders, though. Yeah, man, get on there. And through the magic of video, we have wheel cylinders. A little lapse time has gone by. Uh, I ordered some on eBay. Of course, they did not make it. But I was able to go grab these from a local parts store. I was able to get them to me in a couple of days. So we got those. We got the brake shoes to kind of deal with. I was not able to score those. Fortunately, it's a tractor. And I'm not really that concerned about, you know, this thing is not, it's going to do five miles an hour and we're, we're going to be stopping it. It's not like it's going to be doing 60. So we have the old brake shoes and the old material. My thinking is we might be able to clean that crap up and maybe sandblast the shoes themselves, get some bond, and we'll bond the uh, shoes back to the uh, metal part of them. So let's get one of these apart. We'll probably do this one, this is the one that is apart. Clean some stuff up, see what we can get, get the wheel cylinder off, hopefully the brake line comes off, or else I'll be chasing some of those, and we'll keep on moving. Looks like these shoes are kind of captured. There's a metal going all the way around. It's not like they're just pivoting on a little pivot. So this plate has to come off. And it's got cutter keys on it. That one just totally rotted off. I like these wire cutters. Let's try this one. To tap them apart on cutter keys. Especially when they're really jammed in there. Sometimes it could be a bear. 
my best to straighten them out. And then with the needle nose on, needle nose, the wire cutter's on it. Grab it. And sometimes, if you're lucky, you can get it to move. Because you get a good bite on it. Any other pliers or anything, it just slips real good. But because of the wire cutter, it just bites into it a little bit. Sometimes you'll just cut it right off. It's going. that. Try pulling them down. As long as it comes out right. There we go. One, I'll do the same with the other one. There's those brake adjusters, those big nuts on the back side. Just got a cam on them that rotate. Looks like you just rub on the back of the shoe and make a stop for it. I think we can get rid of any emergency brake stuff, I don't think we need it. I don't know if we need that arm. Does it lock into, eh, maybe. The cross brace that goes across grabs on the other side of it. All right, we'll leave it be. Let's go, first we'll hit them on the wire wheel, get some of the crap off of them, and see how they look after that. Worst case, we'll hit them with a sand blaster. The shoes on the other hand, what do we got? Yeah, there's about a still a quarter inch of rust on those to get removed. While they're drying up, our next, next task is to see if that brake line is going to be savable. Looks like it goes into an adapter. Let's see if she'll she crack loose. We need it. There we go. All right. I'm going to say what we needed to do is be able to spin. A lot of times the line rusts to the, the fitting, but that one is moving. Good. I'm gonna go grab a 3 8 wrench, spin that off of there. We'll get the two nuts, three nuts off the back, get the wheel cylinder off of there. And see if you get the lines off and see if you get the bolts to crack. If they break, that's okay. It'd just be good to use the hardware over, you know? That one will go. Let's go try that top one. Yep, good. be gone. I gotta wait for those brake shoes to dry up, harden up. I got one side done. But I want to jump over to the gas tank real quick. And we can't get this apart. And I think I have some muriatic acid here. I think I do. And what we'll do is maybe while we're screwing around with this, because the glue is probably gonna take an hour, at least an hour to dry, that we can throw some of the acid in the tank. And we'll come over every once in a while, slosh it around. In the room. There we go. This is a little sediment bowl. It's glass. I don't want to. <laughs> Can't tap on it. Come on. Might have been on there a day or two, huh? It's just that varnish from that gas. There we go. Oof. Oof, oof, oof. Oof, she stinks so bad. There's a piece of screen. This might be a filter. I don't want to tear that. Let's dissect a little more. This is the on off valve which is gonna be like a carburetor uh, jet adjustment. 
should have threads in it also. Hopefully we revive all this stuff too. Worst case, we just put like an, an inline fuel shut off. I just hit you in the stomach. Let's get that whole thing right off of there. Let's see if we can get a cork, plug it up with a cork. I think cork will hold up to acid. We're gonna find out. And I could probably put this in the carb cleaner maybe. Yeah, it's plug solid. Nothing's nothing's getting through that. It's just got a bunch of crap right inside it. Yeah. Hiccups. Yeah, that's that's plug solid too. Alright, let me go see if I can find my my acid. Let's get a little up front and personal. So you can get a hole through that. Oh, can't believe how much this stinks. Do I have the cap off? Yeah, I do. Okay. I'm right, gonna go see about finding a little, little cork or something. We can plug that up with. Actually, I found a little bit of plumbing. It should work for us. Better than a cork. I feel a little bit more secure that ass is not going to eat that. There we go. I hope I don't screw this up. I used this once before, you could tell by the tinge of the color. Might as well dump the whole thing in it. But I'll put it back when I'm done. You smell it? Not terrible. Not as bad as the gas that was in it, that's for sure. It doesn't really eat plastic, it doesn't do much against plastic. It just, metal and rust, it'll etch the surface. I don't want to overflow it. What do you think that tank is? Looks like more than a gallon, right? Let's uh, yeah, we look all right. We'll throw the cap on it. Now I'll just do a little bit of a splash with it. Shouldn't say that. A little bit of a rotation. wet the surfaces and we'll let that do its thing. You don't have to shake it or nothing. It just the acid does the work. It's kind of like bleach and mold. So we'll go back to the brake stuff. After I put those carb, that uh, fuel shut off in the ultrasonic cleaner and then we'll get to the brakes. Let's go check in on our shoes. This is the second one that was done. That's yeah, still wet. It's gonna take a little while. It's foaming of the mouth though, all the way around. I don't know if that cures with heat or air. Here's the other side. They didn't fall off, but they're not far behind. I think I can get underneath them with a putty knife, peel them off. If it decides to stay, Fine, maybe I'll work a little glue under it, but I'm gonna see if we're gonna do the same thing that I did with the other side while we're uh, just kind of hanging out here. Put the other shoes off the other side. Yeah, I don't think we were gonna save that one, huh? Not when they snow. It's gone. The shoes, I kind of was was pulling on them, and it doesn't want to pull away. It's it's bonded the rest of the way, but the edges. 
that edge anyway is pulling apart. So I'm going to get myself in there and clean that up as best I can. I'm going to inject glue underneath it and we'll just clamp the very end of it. Again, this is the tractor doing five miles an hour. It's not going to fall apart. If it was a car on the road, well, yeah, I may do it on a car on the road too. <laughs> I don't think they're going to go anywhere though. Oh, the lights getting you right there but these pivots right here go in the brake shoes on the bottom they're supposed to be able to move a little bit <laughs> well the other side i was able to get off this side seems like it definitely took the brunt of the abuse well, we're gonna help her Let's see how the soup's doing. I think they may be good enough for now. I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go rinse them out with water. Water neutralizes it. And this is, uh, every time, every video, people ask. This is Berryman's Carb Dip. Comes in one gallon cans with that little pail. I have like three gallons inside here. It's been in there for, for years. Once in a while, I'll pour. I'll pour it all out after it settles down. And you can kind of clean the dirt out of the bottom. And then just put stuff back in again. I got it blown out. And it is a screen. Although it doesn't look clean, it's about as clean as it's going to get. It's got to go back down. And the seal that was there, it's got a crack in it. I'm going to try an O-ring. Hopefully we can crush down on it. There's enough room to, on the bale to crush down on it. Let's see what we get. As long as you can get this over it. Come on. Do it. Do it. No break. It's all the way up. Pinched me a little on the way in, but that's okay. back in. I don't know if that's should look real quick. It's just metal on metal. What did I do with the wrench? Run that out some. Run that one in, and it ha what's it's got like a little bit of packing in there because you don't want the gas to leak through here either. So it's packing. The more you tighten down on that, I don't have the right one. Hold on. Yeah, the more you tighten on that packing, the tighter this will be to turn. So you want it so you can still do it with your fingers. Run that all the way in. Should be nothing coming through. Let's go. That'll work. Oh, 
Yeah, any more than that. Be too tight. So let's go see if it's open. I'm gonna blow through here. It should come out here. Not well. Let's back that up more. And you know why? Because I never cleaned the center of it out. Meathead. Meathead. <sighs> Who's the new guy? Oh, that crap's going to go in the bowl. <laughs> okay. we'll launch some air through it. Everything in the bowl. It's all dirty. It's all blacked out. I'm going to go take that back apart, clean it one more time. We do it right. Because we do it twice. Well, not too bad, actually. But I want to go rinse that out real good with some uh, brake clean. Right, let's try that again. Let's open her up. That's better. Yeah, see, it shuts off. It does. Now it's complete. I think you're going to let the brakes set up overnight. It actually does say 24 hours for a fuel full cure. This one's probably got about maybe an hour on it now. So we'll just let them do their things. In the meantime, I'll put the wheel cylinders on. The master cylinder is back in place. Brake lines are all hooked up. Uh, wire brush the backing plates down. So we, while we're waiting, let's get the drain plug out of the trans. See if anything comes out of it. <laughs> and also if, uh, if there's any water in it too. Anything? Anything? It's definitely tight. I gotta get a wrench that fits better on that. Man, that sucker's tight. My fear is water because it's been sitting for so long. Sometimes the gear that is on top all the oil runs off of it because the gears aren't totally submerged. They're only submerged, I don't know, about a third of the way, half the way up the gearbox. So the upper half of the gear never sees oil when it's been sitting. And then sometimes over time, it'll run down off it and it'll actually rust the, the top gear. Actually, it's pretty good though. It's dirty, but it's, it's not a watery or anything. Gear oils. Especially all this stuff isn't exactly clear to begin with. I'm checking out the rear. Down, almost on the very bottom. There's like a, I think it's a rubber plug. Get down there. It is right here. Now it's metal. Now I was looking for the fill and I was wondering if it kind of transferred over from the trans through the torque tube and kind of maintained a level. Kind of like a VW uh, bus does its, uh, same thing, but I didn't see down in there. Behind that brake line, right, right there is a plug. The only thing is, there it is. Getting to it and getting it out of there. It's a square shank. I'm going to try. If I can't get that out of there, I'm not going to go pulling this whole, the whole ass end of the tractor off to access it, essentially. That hardware looks like it's going to fight me a little bit. And uh, <laughs> we may just call that one good. But I'm going to give it a shot, see what happens before I try draining it out. See if I can make sure I get the, the fill out of there. It shouldn't be that tight. There's no reason to be. But then again. I was able to get a, uh, a wobble extension. I got the funky looking end on it. You know, compared to that, where it's straight. It allows you to have a socket normally swivel. Let's see how it does for us on this. Ah, that's what I was afraid of. Why would you do that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try a little bit more. I'm going to move you guys out of the way, but I'm not giving her uh, a great chance of cracking loose. I tried it without that. What are you looking at? 
got it. We're in. Good. Not that I think it's going to burn up doing five miles an hour <laughs> for the rest of his life. Oh, we're getting a fluid in there. We have to get a little fancy with a hose. Let's um, see if we can probe it with something. Let's see if there's anything in it. Oh, yeah, it's full. It's pretty clean. I'm going to leave it alone. It's pretty clean. I think at this point I'm going to let those brake shoes sit overnight. I pretty much got as much as I want to get done. The gas tank, we'll let that soak for a while longer overnight also. That shouldn't hurt it. <laughs> this should come in tomorrow. Just a big puddle on the floor. It ate through the, <laughs> ate through the whole thing. But that's it. We're going to let it set up for tonight. And we'll pick back up in a few minutes. But for me, it'll be tomorrow. Yeah. And it's the next afternoon. Probably about, I don't know, 15 hours later. Unfortunately... Uh, tank is developing some leakage behind the bracket so uh, it is what it is we can probably seal it worst case but I probably keep an eye out for another tank for now we could probably just run it with a fuel level that's a little lower let's get that drained out of there see what the inside looks like Well, she's definitely clean, huh? It definitely took care of everything except for the fact that it somewhere back probably where those rust stains are. It ate through the wall. Yeah, right there. Gonna be our issue. Yeah. Oh. Everyone set out with water. We're gonna use it the best we can for now. Take that take that bracket off. It's in there somewhere. I think it's right there. Yeah. Go hit her with a wire wheel, clean some of that off. Right there. What do you say we try some of that? It's 
been about 20 minutes. You can still almost kind of stick your fingernail in it. it leaves like a little indent, but it's hardened up a decent amount. I put water in it. We're going to see what it does. It'll probably even help it cure. Here's the, what was left over. It's hardened up pretty good. We'll leave it. It's filled right to the top. We'll see if it decides to leak anywhere else also. I'll go check in on our brake shoes now. That stuff has cured up over the night. We're going to have to grind off some of the crap on the edges. Get all the vice grips and pliers and clamps off of all of them and see how they did. Let's see if a wire wheel will knock off the pieces that are left. Looking at those drums, I could say they could use a little bit of loving too, huh? <laughs> Some of the shoe was actually stuck to it. To do it. A little check on the tank. Looks like it's doing just fine. Yeah, it's hardened up pretty good. Go drain that back out and we'll run some heat through it, get the moisture out of it. And I'm ready to slam those brake drums back on, piece all that back together. She ain't pretty, but she'll function. Joke there somewhere. the drum sucked in and adjusted this one rubs on the backing plate right there I'm not gonna worry about it we'll let it grind our way in it's just the backing plate touching the groove on the inside I took it off try to clean some rust out out of the groove but it'll fix itself and yeah, see if we can make a mess pulling her up I think about a quart is my guess We're dealing with fluids. Let's go see if our master cylinder is going to survive. Let's give that pedal a couple of hits. It should blow bubbles at first. There we go. I gotta get a wrench on a bleeder in the back. Brought it in, it's going somewhere. I don't see it pissing on the ground yet. That seems to be an excessive amount of fluid going down with no bleeder. <laughs> I don't think I have a bleeder open. I don't see any puddles on the floor yet though. Starting to build up pressure now. So what it's doing, it's filling up the line, but there's air in the wheel cylinders. So as soon as you let off, the wheel cylinder air wants to push back and it pushes all the fluid back out of the line. So let's go cap that off. Go get ourselves a bleeder wrench. Get some brake pedal. At the right size, I have a feeling it's not. Nope. Good.
I'm gonna go fill that master up and go do the other side. Nice when you don't need a helper. You can actually reach the brake pedal. You got a brake pedal. Pretty good one too. Give it one more. Just to push the dirt out of the, the lines. Nice. As long as that master cylinder does not leak. We got brakes. And yet. A little more fluid. I think this one's having it just about done, huh? See it's bound right there. There's a lump in the chain. It's coming around. That one right there is st stuck. Hopefully when it runs a little bit that may just work itself out. I think you get the idea, right? <laughs> we get a gas tank on it, put that belt back on. We'll see what we get. And I do believe this is the last fuel, the last liquid we need to install. Yes, I'm feeling confident. Maybe overly. <laughs> the gas is shut off. We'll turn that on. See if it leaks any further on down the line. So far, so good. You know what that means, don't you? We're partial throttle. And we'll choke it. It may or may not even go on the first pull of the choke. Let's see what we get. <laughs> Start off with a bang. Chokes off. That's slow. It's moving along pretty good. You can find reverse. It's even faster. It's gonna move pretty good. be the same speed as first gear. All right. There we go. She's a liver.
<laughs> it's only idle up a little bit, but uh, I think we got it. We'll put the hood on. Adjusted the idle a little bit, turned it up, and tweaked the air fuel mix. Gonna run it until it just starts dying and back up. Right there. rattling like crazy, gotta latch it down. Figure out how to do it. Oh, it's got, I gotta put a pin in it. place to put your feet down. He's a tad shaky. Get her in the dirt.
Okay. So simple. But it's tough as rocks. And all the crap getting in the flow pole. All the rust and dust still. Rusty dust. Well, that's why it's there. Awesome. Does good. I gotta race Brian. <laughs> Gotta tighten the belt up a little bit. You got a little too much drag in it on third gear. Like it, it doesn't really just like take right off. Kind of slips a little bit. So that's the only place where that slip is there. That is just needs really some a better place to put your feet down because you end up putting your feet on these two rods that are are the steering back and forth. So as you're steering the wheel, you know your feet are kind of rolling with it. It looks like maybe they they got used to resting it right here. Maybe there's no paint. Other than that, it, it's built really well. It was everything's kind of matched right to its horsepower and the gear ratio and everything. I don't know what it's gonna be like dragging stuff around, but uh, <laughs> it's a tank. You're not gonna find any regular garden tractor mate today. Like that. Well guys, I think that's gonna bring us to that part of the video where we call it the end. <laughs> Works out awesome. I'm probably gonna bring it over to my house and putt around during the summer with it. We got some trails behind the house over in uh, Brian's yard and he's got his redneck tractor. So this may, you know, a little bit of play in the woods <laughs> this video i think is very long already so i think that's where we're gonna go end it may or may not bring it back in the future i may do some things to it a little bit here and there but all in all it's pretty decent i might take the chains off for the summer it really going over the you know it really rocks the body back and forth but that's it <laughs> what a beast of a machine it's awesome all right guys with that thank you all for hanging out with me have a little bit of fun a little bit of ranching Bring old junk back to life and uh, just enjoying life in general. Until then, later. It's a funky looking machine. That's cool. Big water in the car. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. I didn't... <laughs> we had the motor running, but. Uh... Oh, it's got a little Briggs or something on it. Yeah. So it probably needs new points. <laughs> probably a few other things. Would you rope start it or does it have an electric start? No, it's a rope start. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. Is that a four Yeah, I think a model T we ran. Yeah. I don't know. 34, whatever. It's a beast of a rear. Yeah, it is. See. You Old want to things. pull it out more? I can't get in my truck right now, but... Oh, you leave it at my house too if you wanted to.
<laughs> you just want to get rid of it, or what's your well, thoughts? I, I have to check with my son. Okay. Because I basically gave it to him. But that's How many years ago? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ouch. Hmm. I had a problem in a few things with it. I it might still be here. <laughs> yeah, 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 I didn't forget. Stop your writing. Now it's complete.